there everybody, this is Brittany from Teach Me ABA, and today we're going to continue with our series talking about task list five. Now we're going in order all the way from A1 all the way to the end. So today we're going to discuss A-4. As we've previously mentioned, go ahead and take a look at the earlier videos. This way you have kind of a basic understanding and you can catch up to where we are right now. <laughs> So today we're going to be discussing A-4, and this is discussing behaviorism and how it distinguishes from the experimental analysis of behavior known as EAB, applied behavioral analysis, and the professional practice that is guided within the science of behavior analysis. So let's get into it. So the philosophy of the science of behavior is called behaviorism. Now from behaviorism came the experimental analysis of behavior known as EAB. And really, from there on came the applied behavioral analysis came after that. But really, we have to talk about how all of this goes together and how we continue making sure that we have all of these principles within our practice. So before discussing EAP, we have to go back a little bit and talk about John B. Watson's stimulus response behaviorism. Now, Watson was known for changing the direction of psychology to studying um, observable behaviors rather than mental processes that are happening within the mind. Watson essentially stated that there are environmental stimuli um, and the organism's responses. So this is the S and the R, and those were evoked by those stimuli. This theory then led to the incredible idea that the prediction of human behavior was going to be possible. Now, B.F. Skinner took that another step and he took this theory further by suggesting that the SR behaviorism couldn't explain all behaviors that were happening. So he theorized that there must be more to what there is in front of us. Now, within John B. Watson's SR behaviorism, we're looking at clear antecedents. But B.F. Skinner said that what happens with behaviors that don't have those clear antecedents? So there's got to be something more. He said that future behaviors were impacted by stimuli that occurred immediately after the behavior. So anything that happened after a behavior occurred. This gave the scientific community the SRS formula, known as the three-termed contingency. All this essentially means is that behavior is a learned process by previous experiences. This became known as operant behavior. Essentially what this meant is that behavior is a learned process and it happens by the history of these operant behaviors that happen. Now, within the study of this came a new scientific approach, and there we came to experimental analysis of behavior, where the methodology consists of collecting a rate at which a given behavior occurs with a single subject in a controlled environment. While EAB focused primarily on studying behaviors on animals, Skinner explained that behaviorism as a science could be applied to humans. So by further expanding on the realm of behaviorism, Skinner acknowledged that there are private events such as thoughts and feelings. And these thoughts and feelings are also learned in the same way that operant behaviors are. We just can't necessarily see them. So, in 1949, we had the first study of human application using the principles of operant behavior. And it was written about an 18-year-old boy with severe developmental disabilities who was taught to move his arm every instance that he was fed a sugary milk solution. Thus, ABA proved that its principles can be applied to human behavior in order to increase targeted behaviors with a variety of individuals. Now, more than ever, we as behavior analysts use the science of behavior within our professional practice to improve the lives of those in most need. While also knowing that within our practice, um, the work is never really done. There is no singular answer for how behavior works, but our promise is that we're gonna continue to conduct research and improve the lives and provide um, a better quality of life for all of these individuals. Now, that was a lot of information covered once again. Uh, just as a reminder, this is A-4, but we were talking about distinguishing behaviorism, uh, experimental analysis of behavior known as EAB, uh, applied behavioral analysis known as ABA, and uh, the professional practice that guides the science of behavior analysis. As always, please go ahead and leave any comments. Uh, please like, subscribe, share this video, and good luck studying. Once again, this is Brittany from Teach Me ABA, and have a great day.
Thank you.